Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Lucian supplementary guide, and today we're going to be taking a look at First Strike on Lucian. Now, of course, we all know that Press the Attack is pretty much going to be the best rune for Lucian. I think that's pretty undisputed at this point. At the beginning, um, when Patch 5.1 came out, I thought that First Strike might have been better, but after playing both builds, I can conclusively say that Press the Attack is better. However, First Strike is still viable and still can, of course, help you in a lot of ways by giving you the extra burst damage and, of course, also giving you extra gold. So it's not a non-viable rune in any way. It's, it's probably a second best rune and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it real soon. So let's first take a look at his build. So of course we're going to start off with the Gluttonous Greaves as usual for the AD as well as the Omni Vamp. And then of course our most common first item, Bloodthirster, AD, Crit, Physical Vamp and bonus stats when you're high on health. And then here um, I always say it's kind of a choice between going for Charge Blade and Blaster. So in the previous updated complete guide I did go for Charge Blade which I think overall um, is the... I mean, you can't really say better because both of them have their pros and cons. Like, Charge Blade gives you more burst and gives you a little bit more of a mixed damage profile, whereas Magnetic Blaster gives you extra range, which helps you poke a little bit. And also, in this case, the extra range is going to help you prop first strike because, of course, with first strike, you need to be the... You need to attack the enemy before they attack you. And with Lucian's trash range, Blaster is going to be able to help you prop your first strike. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, before it gets disabled by the enemy by, by them attacking you. So next up, we have Infinity Edge. So of course, Infinity Edge standard um, uh, item gives you AD as well as, of course, increasing your crit damage. And of course, also giving you the health penalty. And then finally, we have Moral Reminder for the Armor Pen as well as the Grievous Wounds. Now you can go for Seralda's Grudge, which is actually probably better. So you can go for Seralda's Grudge instead if the enemy team has no healing. And then for your last item, you can go for another crit item such as Novara Quick Blades or even uh, Slurry Charge Blade. Um, something like that. So for our last item here, we have GA for the revive, but of course you can go for other defensive options um, such as your your Maw or even your Sterics Gauge if I can find it um, right here. Um, also, of course, you can go for Triforce as a last item option as well for a little bit more offensive power, but also it gives you a little bit of health and such, so it, it, it does give you some kind of defensive stats. So for the runes, of course, as I mentioned, you're going to go for First Strike. So First Strike, of course, is going to allow you to deal bonus damage when you a strike first and also gives you bonus gold. So this, of course, is going to help you with your burst. And yeah, it's just a viable rune on Lucian altogether. So here we have Brutal for our first um, rune here because obviously, you know, we auto attack, um, you know, a lot in between our spells. So we'll prop this really often. Giant Slayer in general is going to be the best here. And... Um, of course, Coup de Gras into completely squishy teams, and here, of course, we have Bloodline for the extra Omni Vamp. Now, I, I will say that I do see a lot of Lucians are taking um, Alacrity instead, uh, but I personally don't think that ne that makes too much sense because I don't think attack speed is, you know, very useful on Lucian. I think healing is a lot more useful, so I always go for uh, Bloodline myself. And then for the minor rune, you can go for, of course, sudden impact for the extra armor and magic pen when you, uh, whenever you proc your 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 E, which is your dash. Or, of course, you could go for bone plating for the more um, defensive option. But I think in this particular build, Sudden Impact is better because you can get more first, more damage and you know get more stats from First Strike, more damage and more gold from First Strike. So generally, I will go for Sudden Impact here. And the spells is the standard Flash Exhaust Loadout. So with all that said, let's now jump into talking about our gameplay. Okay, so now we're hopping into the gameplay. Now, as you guys can obviously see from the title and the thumbnail of this video, it's going to be a pretty exciting gameplay because, of course, we are going to be getting a pentakill sooner or later, and it's a pretty interesting, interesting game. So, looking at the, the game overall, my team is pretty standard except for the lack of AP because we do have a Yasuo mid. Um, but the enemy team has a Tristana jungle and a Rakan mid, which is really weird stuff um, overall. So it's a pretty interesting team come from the enemy team, but of course nothing to be underestimated with because of course Rakan building full AP with solo XP and solo gold is, you know, going to be able to one-shot people. So that is, of course, scary. <coughs> um, excuse me there. So then we also, of course, have Tristana Jungle, who of course does scale very well into the late game and is going to be able to very easily kill people. So, you know, it is weird picks, but I'm not going to underestimate them. In our lane, we have the classic Lucian-Nami combo. Of course, we all know Nami is pretty much the best um, support for Lucian majority of the time. Followed by probably the engaged supports because Lucian doesn't really like the enchantment supports all that much. 
And then on the other side, we have a classic combo as well of Caitlyn Morgana, where, of course, Morgana Root spells instant death, because Morgana Root is going to become Caitlyn Trap into Caitlyn Net, into Caitlyn Q, into, like, double headshot into death, um, basically. And, of course, also giving the Black Shield for Caitlyn to be able to avoid CC. So, classic combos on both sides. We have the Lucianami versus the, the Caitlyn Morgana. And, of course, Lucianami has, you know, the much worse range. And you can see, I'm, I'm getting bullied by the Caitlyn quite a bit. Uh, and my first track is basically getting removed all of the time, which is one of the reasons why I kind of say that most of the time, press the attack is better, because you can't really remove someone's press the attack, whereas first strike can easily be removed by certain lanes such as this one. And in fact, I get hit by the collateral damage of the combat, and my first strike gets removed once again. However, the thing with first strike is that first strike is not really an early game rune, right? First strike is more of a mid to late game rune, because you, you do get a little bit of goal and a little bit of extra damage in the early game, but really where first strike comes online is when you reach the mid game and you get that, uh, you get some damage under your belt already because you have like one to two items, and that's where your first strike is going to give you a lot more value in terms of the damage, extra damage dealt, as well as the goal that it gives. Whereas in the early game, you can see here we're going for a straight with the first strike. Um, it gives let's see like twelve gold, yeah, which is it's not nothing, but it's you know, it's not very much. And of course, we go for the aggressive trade here because we can see Morgana at mid, so we know that Caitlyn is alone. Uh, and here, Caitlyn is getting bubbled, so we're going to trade into her again. She's taking a bunch of damage and does have to pop the heal. Morgana comes in at a pretty weird angle, so we're trying to see if we can trade onto her as well. But unfortunately, my cooldowns are not up, so we're not going to be able to get that trade. Now, my first track is back up. I'm able to proc it onto the Caitlyn just with one Q. Uh, but you can see that gives me like 7 gold, which again is not nothing, but it's not a lot either. And yeah, now Morgana's back in the lane, so it's a little bit harder for us now. We're trying to clear out the minion so that we can actually back. And we don't actually end up getting this, this minion killed, but we're not going to waste any more time. We're just going to back. And we're going to pick up the Gluttonous Greaves and the Longsword. Of course, we, were, we really needed a reset there. So we chose to, to lose that one minion to, to reset, which is pretty okay. Now, Morgana and Caitlyn looks like they are also uh, resetting. Uh, Morgana is resetting a lot later than Caitlyn. Uh, she's trying to shove in the wave, I, I guess, but Caitlyn has already reset. And here we tried to um, stop Morgana from resetting, but instead, uh, we're going to end up getting a trade onto Caitlyn uh, instead of uh, getting the cancel onto Morgana, which I guess is fine as well. That works. Our wave is slow pushing. Caitlyn gets caught. We flash forward to follow up. And we have the ulti. We easily finish her off. And here Tristana comes in. I exhaust her honestly way too early in panic and she is going to be able to get me eventually. If I played that better, I do believe that actually I survive and she just dies. However, we did already get the kill onto Caitlyn and my team is going to be able to finish off the kill onto... Uh, Alright, they don't actually finish off the kill onto the Morgana. We get the kill onto Caitlyn and they get the kill onto Tristana. So overall, it's a 1 for 2 trade, so it's not the worst situation uh, in the world. Uh, we still come out on top in terms of the numbers, so I'm not going to complain too much, but... If I panicked a little bit less and exhausted Tristana like half a second later and reduced the damage of the explosion instead of just her auto attacks, I would have actually survived there, uh, most likely. Although she did out me out of position, so who really knows what would have happened? Alright, no point speculating, but my point here is you should always wait uh, and exhaust Tristana a little bit later because you want to exhaust her bomb damage and not her auto attack damage, which is something that of course I knew. But in panic, like, I saw someone jumping on top of me, I just exhaust them immediately, just based on instinct. It's that kind of instinct that, like, you know, when a Kha'Zix lands on you, or a Rengar just randomly lands on top of you, you instantly have to exhaust. So, basically, I would say that it's not that bad, because this, like, instant reaction exhaust works on almost every champion, except for a very few champions, champions like Tristana, where they have more backloaded damage than frontloaded damage. So here, Nami Wave comes in, I'm already dashing on top of Caitlyn, trying to get on top of her. Morgana body blocks majority of the spells here, but we are able to finish off Caitlyn eventually. Morgana does get the stun, and I'm trying to chase here, but I run straight into the Morgana root, which puts an end to my dream of killing the Morgana in this instance. And instead, we're going to have to uh, settle for clearing the wave and maybe getting a tower plate. But instead of, of that, since Morgana is defending, we're actually just going to go over to the dragon to help Lee Sin to secure the dragon. Tristana is trying to come in, gets bubbled. Lee Sin uh, and myself turn on to the Tristana, and Tristana does have to flash away. We are able to secure the Mountain Dragon, and a fight is kind of breaking out. However, I have zero mana, and Lucian is a mana-dependent champion because he does need to cast his spells, unlike uh, other regular ADCs that can just stand there and auto-attack and still be useful. Lucian, not very useful without mana, so I go back for the fruit to get the mana, but the fight ends up ending with basically no one dying anyways. 
So we are going to just go here, get the wave, shove it all the way in, and then we're going to go for a reset. So here we are able to finally complete our Bloodthirster on the, the, the complete the first item on the, the so-called first power spike with that first item. And now, of course, just heading back to lane. Morgana looks like she's roaming again to mid, so we know Caitlyn is alone. I really wanted to dash on her, but Caitlyn wasn't really quite there yet. Nasus kills the entire rest of our team and gets a triple kill. Um, so Nasus is now 4-1. Um, yeah, he's pretty fed. So here, we're just going to quickly shove in the wave, and we're going to try to to get as much of tower platings as possible. Of course, Caitlyn is going to try her best to stop us, and of course, first tower is already down, but we can still get quite a number of plates. Caitlyn actually backs off all the way um, in fear of us killing her, which I don't know if she should be that scared. I mean, we could definitely kill her, but it wouldn't really be... It, it would be a little bit risky, but either which way, Tristana ends up coming down, removes my first strike, unfortunately, it's just blasting us. Uh, here, we're not going to dash in on her. Uh, we do a lot of burst damage, of course, and Rao Rakan is here as well. It's a full on party. The entire enemy team is now down here, and my entire team is down here as well. I'm popping the ulti, trying to get some uh, chip damage onto Caitlyn and whoever else. It's a 4v4 here, uh, with the top laners not being involved. Darius looks like he might be rotating, or he might just be going mid to clear wave. But Morgana, for some reason, is just face checking, not even, not even face checking, just walking straight into the bush, and we get the kill onto her. We flash forward and get the kill onto the Caitlyn as well, who got caught by the Yasuo Tornado. So while she's getting CC'd, we lay down the damage and pick up the kill onto her. Tyra stepped at 1 HP, 1 auto attack is going to do the trick, uh, which is exactly what we do. And you know, we're just going to clear the next wave since we know that no one is going to be here anyway. We just killed multiple of them and we can see Rakan and, um, and uh, Nasus on vision. We have exhaust for Tristana if she comes, so we're not too scared. And we just uh, clear off another wave, and then we're going to rotate over. So now we're building towards our Magnetic Blaster, which is of course going to be our next big uh, big item purchase. And here Rakan uses dash already, so that's why I'm just basically running him down, because he, he his only free targeted dash is his W. For him to use E, he has to target somebody, and there is nobody around. So, you know, he was basically having to just walk away, um, you know, in this instance. So here, uh, while we're on the way back down to clear the wave, we're going to pick up the Skull Crab. Um, next wave is coming already, as we can see based on the mirrored waves from our side. So we're just going to quickly clear up this wave, make sure that we maintain the push to force the enemy team to either respond to the push or to lose uh, minions to the tower and waste gold. So this gives me enough gold for my magnetic, bla magnetic blaster. So I'm going to reset, get magnetic blaster, and walk to top lane where it looks like there's a four-man unit of the enemy team in the top lane. Of course, I do want to be cautious here. I use the ulti to basically clear the wave as well as get some chip damage onto them at the same time to stop their push. Morgana backs at a pretty dangerous position. I'm not sure if she was baiting for Rakan, but if she was, it's not very effective because Rakan doesn't do enough damage to one-shot anybody at this point. Um, in fact... Uh, and it's really weird because Rakan has a Nash's Tooth first item instead of like a Ludens Echo or something like that. So Nash's Tooth is like an attack speed item and I don't really see Rakan like jumping in and just auto attacking. And that's really weird. So uh, I'm not sure what's this Rakan itemization. If she, if he had Ludens there, I think he might have been able to kill somebody. So uh, that was really weird. But here we have the the 6 and one Nasus to deal with here who has more gold than me. He's super duper tanky. Like that auto attack did almost no damage. Um... In, uh, in respect to his health, so here he's kind of chasing us uh, and I'm just running away because you know if he catches up to me he surely kills me because I don't do enough damage to kill him whereas he's gonna kill me in the long run so I don't really want to mess with Nasus until I get to quite a number of items only at which point will I try to deal with the Nasus. But for now I'm just gonna generally try to avoid him. Um, Dragon gets secured by the Lee Sin and um, here we're just going to finish the kills who's not the Nasus, which is basically just everybody else. And yeah, Nasus escapes to somewhere inside our jungle. There he is, uh, in the bush, does manage to finish off the recall. And here we're just going to pick up the Raptors to, of course, maintain our farm. And while we're at it, the Krux have spawned as well, so we're going to grab the Krux as well. We don't really... Um, need to reset we could for the mana uh, like you can see here but we want to secure more gold to get more item components first 
Um, yeah, there we finally got enough for the BF Sword. Uh, at that point, we didn't really have enough for the BF Sword, so we kind of needed to get just a little bit more gold for that BF Sword. Now we're letting Lee Sin, of course, take the red buff, and we're going to just get the buff share here. Uh, we can see Nasus and Tristana in the top lane, and those are the, the, really the two main threats of the team. Like, Nasus 7 and 1, and Tristana is um, also pretty relatively fed uh, compared to the rest of her team as well as majority of my team. Uh, whereas the Rakan, Caitlyn, and Morgana are basically just feeding, so they, they really, you know, aren't too big of a threat. Uh, but here you can see my team is dogpiling onto Nasus, and it doesn't seem to be working. Nasus goes legendary, kills Lee Sin, Yasuo has to run for the hills. And yeah, this is just not a very good look, because uh, Nasus is getting to a point where uh, he's becoming kind of unstoppable. Like, no one on, on our team can really kill him unless we just dogpile him, and I, I guess Darius would kill him in the long run, but that's just not happening at the moment. Morgana hits another nice route onto me, which is pretty annoying. I'm trying to ult her down, uh, but she is able to sidestep into the alcove, so not very successful there. And Nasus is kind of just there, um, guarding her, so we can't, can't really... Um, you know, do too much because we don't want to dash into the Nasus. So here instead, we're just trying to avoid Nasus until it comes a time where I want to find him, which there will come that kind of time where I want to find him, I want to get the shutdown and things like that. But here we're just going to focus this mid lane tower. Rakan can't really defend the tower by himself because he's going to have to jump and uh, onto the minions to clear it and he's just going to get hooked by Darius and just die so he can't really defend the tower. We get the mid lane tower, of course all tier 1 towers are now taken um, on the on my side of the team and we are able to complete the IE. So now at this point, I'm thinking maybe I can fight Nasus because I'm at 3 items and I have IE so maybe I can fight Nasus. Um, and yeah, we might actually try, we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. Now we're just going to quickly push in this wave. And yeah, so here is where we're looking to go for Nasus. You can see here we're, we're rotating, he's pretty uh, overextended now. He can't see us coming because his team is, of course, um, showing that we are coming. So here I'm going to dash on top of him, he does wither me. I'm using all of my spells on him. Nami wave unfortunately does not hit. I hit majority of my ulti onto him. And now I'm just dashing into him, his Terex procs, and he, he does uh, ulti. I'm going to exhaust him and try dashing and kiting away. But uh, unfortunately, as you can see, uh, we can't really kill Nasus. However, we are able to get him low enough for Darius to end up going in and getting the 1k shutdown, which is pretty unfortunate because I kind of wanted to shut down, but honestly, I'm already like a good 1 to 2k ahead of everyone else in the game, except, of course, Nasus, uh, who does still have more gold than me. Uh, but yeah, so, so Darius does get the shutdown, and my team generally wins the fight. How? I'm uh, sorry, my team doesn't win the fight at all. What, what am I talking about? My team completely loses the fight. And we lose an inhib on top of that as well, with Tristana in the mid lane, uh, just pushing the entire time. Um, I'm not, right, not not quite sure what I was just, just um, you know, talking about there. <laughs> but yeah, we definitely just got destroyed in the fight, and um, yeah, we do lose quite a bit. So the good news, or uh, the good news is that Nasus shutdown did, you know, get taken. So at least that the, even though it wasn't taken by me, but it was taken, so our, my team gets a huge injection of 1k gold from the Nasus. And basically at this point, we have about a 1k gold lead, so that's where the 1k gold lead came from. Um, so very, very even match. Um, this is going to be a Mountain Dragon Soul for my team, if we, if we can get this Infernal Dragon. Although Mountain Dragon Soul doesn't really matter all that much. However, um, here Rakan gets caught, becomes a free pick. You can see the first strike damage coming in, 78 gold now from that uh, one trait. Uh, you can see now the first strike gold and the first strike damage is now just coming in because we are, of course, already at three items and we have insane amounts of burst damage now. Tristana is not even interested in the dragon; she's pushing the opposite side of the, of the map. But Yasuo is there to kind of defend. Morgana kind of gets caught, um, has to pop the stasis again. I'm just gonna walk up and finish off the kill. And we're gonna, just going to take all the enemy jungle camps. Unfortunately, I accidentally end up uh, taking the blue buff here uh, from the Lee Sin because he could have gotten the buff share. Um, but yeah, I accidentally, accidentally auto the, the buff here. So here uh, we have Caitlyn as well as Nasus here. Um, Caitlyn nearly gets caught, and she does get caught by Lee Sin and does end up dying. And yeah, so here one of the things about Nasus is that he can't really defend the tower very well because he can only single target um, the minions. He can't re doesn't really have very effective wave clear. Um, his E doesn't really do very much damage since he's not building AP. So overall, as long as he can't reach me, I can basically damage him for free. Um, like what you can see here, just 
giving him a, a little bit of auto attacks. It's not going to kill him, obviously, but it is going to chip away at his HP. And if somehow, some way, a fight ends up breaking out, that is going to matter eventually. However, of course, for now, that doesn't quite matter. And now we're going to clear this huge bot wave that has accumulated. Um, Yasuo ends up taking one or two minions, but thankfully, with the help of our range as well as our magnetic blaster, we actually clear a majority of the wave and get majority of the gold. Uh, we also have now completed our mole reminder, so now at four full items. Now I'm thinking that at this point we surely will be able to deal with the Nasus, right? So we shall see. I also get a QSS because you guys can see that majority of the time the main issue I'm having is getting hit by Morgana roots. Um, of course, Stasis is useful for things like Rakan or Tristana's bomb, but ha they haven't really been problems this entire match. Like, Tristana has only killed me once with her bomb, whereas I've been, got hit by like five Morgana roots already, and like it's getting kind of annoying. So QSS is going to be there um, for that. So here, um, again, I accidentally take the red buff from these. So I'm just typing in the chat there, uh, apologizing because I'm not doing it on purpose. But it's just yeah, it's yeah. If I was him, I would be a little bit tilted here. So. I uh, just wanted to apologize real quick, because that, that that was not intentional. But anyways here, Baron is up, Elder Dragon is spawning in about a minute, and enemy team is getting corralled into their top side jungle. Nothing much is really happening here, because neither team really has the, the like power or, or the lead to really you know push or do anything. I mean, you could argue that now my team has kind of opened up quite a big lead. But we are just going to start Baron, right? actually just waiting for Elder to spawn, and Tristana is kind of getting caught. Uh, is getting caught actually. She does end up dying uh, right before Elder Dragon spawn. Lee Sin is going in really, really deep, and we don't want Lee Sin to, to, to trade the kill and end up getting caught himself. So here, once again, I'm getting rooted. I decide to eventually use the QSS to just walk away because I wasn't. I didn't feel I was that much in threat, to be honest. There, Caitlyn almost dies. Um, I had flash, and I considered flashing to complete the kill with the ulti, but I was like, you know, Caitlyn is not even that valuable. My flash is more valuable than Caitlyn's life at this point. So I was like, let me save my flash for like flashing away from Nasus or something, uh, you know, in case we need it. Um, yeah, so here Tristana, death timer is still 15 seconds. We should be able to pick up a free Elder Dragon into probably a free Baron into probably, um, you know, winning the game. So looks like pretty textbook, uh, pretty textbook play. So here I'm, I'm I want to kind of reset honestly, but uh, here I'm paying for Baron instead. Lee Sin decides he has other ideas. And here I'm pinging to for him for his assistance, and, and I'm pinging just to do Baron. Like, it's it's basically free, right? The game is free. You just need to take Elder, you take Baron, and you end the game. But for some reason, Lee Sin goes all the way in, goes jumps in onto onto the the Nasus, gets withered, and gets killed by Tristana. So, yeah. So it's no longer a free Baron anymore, and we can't actually take the Baron. So this just puts us in a very awkward situation because. Now we have Elder, but we can't really get Baron, because if we go for Baron, Tristana can just jump in and steal. I mean, yeah, they'll probably lose a few members for trying to steal, such as this Morgana, who is just walking in to face check the Baron, apparently. Uh, but they will probably lose a few members, but they aren't going to... They aren't, they're aren't. probably going to get the Baron, and, you know, it's just not going to be very good for us. So, so yeah, there's not too much we can do. So here, what I'm doing instead is I'm going to try to clear this top wave and try to use the Elder to push, because... Although we can't get Baron, we can still deter the enemy team from fighting us because we have Elder and the enemy team wouldn't want to fight us with Elder. Now Nasus, decides he has other ideas, he's going to eat an entire ult from me. Nice prediction by the Rakan because he, he predicts my dash but I'm going to easily finish him off. Tristana jumps in and we one shot her with the power of Elder as well as our 4 crit items. Now we're going to run down the Nasus Hysterics procs. Uh, but we're going to focus on the Caitlyn first because he, she's squishy, double auto attack just instantly kills her. Elder Dragon procs onto the... Nasus for the quadra kill and the penta kill is going to be the respawning Morgana um, who I kind of need to kill some way. Thankfully she decides to give me the penta kill and just flashes in um, to donate the penta kill over. Thank you very much. Uh, very appreciated. And off of that uh, we can just end the game. So pretty unexpected what happened here. The enemy team pretty much ends up going in on us one by one and we end the game this, despite the fact that Lee Sin fumbled the bag and didn't get us the Baron. So I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and goodbye.